We spoke the other day about whether you should or you should not sell your work. And that's really a decision that is up to you if you feel you're ready and you are looking for the income or just need to clear out some of the stuff that starts to pile up in the shop because you've been making stuff for the fun of it and you need to get it into the hands of somebody who will appreciate your work, you might as well sell it. But that doesn't address what's it worth to you. What do you need to make financially to sell your work? And that's a sad reality. Most of us can't afford to just make it for the love of it and give it away. Now, if you can, you're probably going to be a better blacksmith in the long run because you don't have to worry about the financial side. You can spend your time just getting it right and then pass it on to people that really appreciate it. That's not very realistic for the vast majority of us, though. The only way we can afford to buy the tools and the equipment that we need is if the shop is profitable. And that means we have to charge a fair price for our work. So how do we figure that out? What is a fair price for an ads or a hammer or a hinge or even a dragon's head? How do we calculate that? Well, it should start the day you first start blacksmithing. And that means record keeping. Uh, that's the least fun part is as far as I'm concerned, is keeping records, keeping the books, keeping receipts, documenting everything, and keeping a good record of your finances and what does it really cost you to make an S-hook. You need to know that. And it isn't just the materials. You don't need to know that you've got 25 cents worth of materials in this S-hook. I mean, you do need to know that, but that's not where it ends. There is so much more involved. Have you invested money in building your shop? And is that shop something that is unique to blacksmithing? Or is that just that you've improved the garage that is attached to your house, and when you sell your house, you're going to get your money back for the improvements, even though you've used it as a blacksmith shop in the meantime? Or does, is it something that you're not going to get your money back later, and all of that is an investment in blacksmithing right now? And that's an important thing to consider. My shop. It's going to add some value to my property, but for the most part, it's a value to my blacksmith shop, and it's not something I expect to get all of my money back out of when I sell the property when I get too old to blacksmith. So I need to factor in the expenses of owning this building as part of what I have to make in blacksmithing. And that goes for the post vise. It goes for the little bandsaw. It goes for this workbench we're sitting at. It's the price of an anvil, the price of hammers, the price of the materials, the fuel, oxygen and acetylene if you use a torch, propane if you use a propane forge, grinding belts, buffing compounds, oil for your power hammer. All of that stuff is an expense that goes into the making of even the simplest little product. And at some point in your blacksmithing, you have to pay yourself back for that. Now most of us, when we start, we are buying this stuff out of our pocket. We've got money in savings, there's a little bit extra in the family budget. Maybe we've got some friends that have given us some equipment that they had laying around the house. But ultimately, that's not how you continue to fund this if you're going into business, even on a small level. It's the profit from selling product that is going to pay you back for that. So you have to know what you spent, and you have to have some sort of a reasonable payback time. Now I don't expect to go out and buy a new power hammer, which I'm not really going to go do, but if I were to go out and buy a new power hammer, it would cost me about ten to fifteen thousand dollars. I don't expect to make that back in the first month or the first year that I own that power hammer. But at, over a ten year period, I do kind of expect to be paid back for that hammer. It's kind of like depreciating things on your taxes. There's a, a payback period that you should get your money back for that stuff. And I'm at a point in blacksmithing now that I have paid myself back for all of the tools and the equipment that I bought out of my own budget before running the shop. I wasn't good at keeping records, but I did keep them. I kept a little ledger book and had it all on paper and when I went to computer I transferred all of those old records to computer and I know what I spent out of my pocket that's a, an account 
that I have in my computer, and I know how much of that I've paid myself back. And now I'm paying myself. I'm no longer owe myself. I'm not paying myself back. I'm actually paying myself a wage. And at some point, you've got to figure out what all that is. You also have to add the cost of materials. You also have to figure out shipping if there's going to be shipping expenses. And usually the customer pays for that, but that's an income, and the shipping is an expense, and you have to keep track of what the income is, what the expenses are. And if you're going to shows, if you're going to set up at a craft show, and it's going to cost you $50 for the table space, and you're going to spend an extra $20 on lunch that you probably wouldn't have spent if you'd stayed at home because the overpriced hot dog at the craft show costs a lot of money, and you're going to be there for a couple of days. And your travel expenses to get to the show, if it's not just right around the corner, all of those things factor in to what it costs you to make even the simplest, smallest product. So the trap that most new blacksmiths set themselves up for is the thought that my work isn't worth it. I'm a beginner. I haven't made a lot of these. It's just not worth it. Well, if it's not worth it, don't sell it. If it's good enough to sell, it's good enough for you to be paid a fair wage. So how do you calculate that? Well, if you've been keeping records, you should know your expenses. And if you're just starting out, you're going to have to sort of estimate some of those expenses. Again, the, the S-hook is a good example. Maybe you made your first dozen S-hooks using material that you scrounged and it didn't cost you anything. But if you're going to be in business doing that, you need to be getting paid for new material because the next time you make a dozen S-hooks, you might have to buy brand new material and you need to be charging enough to pay for that new material and not assuming that you'll always scrounge. Scrounging is actually more expensive. If it takes you two hours to scrounge the material for a dozen S-hooks versus a half an hour at the steel yard to buy the material, you've probably spent time that is more valuable than the material you've scrounged. That's hard to say, but it's something you have to think about. And you've got to factor all this stuff in, and I can't give you a number. I can't tell you that for every pound of ironwork that you let go out of the shop, that you will have spent $10 or $100 or whatever the the factor is, everybody's overhead is going to be different. It depends on your working situation. Are you working in a building that already exists? Are you working out of the garage? Are you renting a, an industrial space to work because you live in an apartment and you had to go rent this 20 by 20 building in an industrial site just to set up shop? That's going to cost you a lot more than if you're working on your own property. I don't have to pay a lease on my building, but I have to pay for the upgrades. I have to pay for the wiring. It's not, not something that is all pre-existing. So it's, it's something you have to consider. The other thing that changes your overhead are simply tools. Like I say, you need to pay yourself back for these tools. If you buy a fly press or a power hammer or build a hydraulic press or a treadle hammer, you need to be paying yourself back for that. So your overhead is higher. You have to factor in a higher overhead amount. But chances are you're going to get work done faster. So it's going to sort of balance out that an item may still be worth the same amount, but you're making a lot more items as a result of having spent more for the equipment. I don't know if that makes sense or not. But I'll try to explain that better in an upcoming video on production-oriented work. If it's getting darker and you can't see me as well, I'm sorry, I forgot to charge the light batteries last night and both lights have now gone out. So we're just sort of on our own here with whatever natural light we've got coming through the skylights. So you know your expenses. You know what it costs you to make something. You can, you can factor in that long-term expense. You can factor in what it's going to cost you to keep materials and fuel and abrasives and welding rod and all that stuff on hand. And you can figure out that it's costing you $2 to make an S-hook. You, you can note that's not hard to figure. It's just a matter of keeping the records, doing the math, scratching your head to try and make sure you know everything that goes into to making your simple little S-hook. 
The other factor you have to know, though, for pricing is how much time does this take? Do, do you make an S hook in an hour? Do you make two dozen S hooks in an hour? That's a big difference. So you need to look at how much time, and you need to do that reasonably. Not the fastest you can work, and not the worst, most uncoordinated day you've ever had in the shop, but a nice average. What do you really make in an hour? Now, I can make about two dozen S hooks in an hour, usually. So I need to figure out what my, my time is worth. What do I want to make for an hourly rate? So if I want to make $24 an hour, it's an easy number to figure, that means that the time in the shop, this S hook is worth a dollar to me. Now I've got two dollars worth of overhead in here, and that, again, that's materials, tools, shipping, advertising, website expenses if you've got a website, credit card processing fees, show expenses, insurance, all that stuff, two dollars worth of that goes to an S hook. So does that mean I sell this for three dollars? No, it actually doesn't. There's one other time factor that you should calculate in when looking at something like this. And that is how much of your time is really spent making this versus doing other things. Now for me, I try to spend about four to six hours a day actually in the shop actually making product. But that also means that I probably spend another four to six hours not in the shop making product. Either on the computer, doing customer correspondence, ordering supplies, ordering materials, paying the bills, packaging, shipping, making phone calls, driving to town to pick up materials, all of that stuff takes time. And I, I estimate, and there, I don't have perfect records, uh, my time records are not as good as my financial records, but I estimate that I'm about 50-50 working on product, doing other things that are necessary for the running a business is the other 50 percent. If you're sitting at a craft show trying to sell hammers and you sit there for eight hours a day, Saturday and Sunday, you spent 16 hours. Now that's 16 hours not spent forging hammers, but that's 16 hours of your time that you have invested in trying to make a profit. Are you going to get paid back for that? So it's something to consider and something to factor in to the price of the S-hook. So if it takes me a dollar's worth of my labor to make an S-hook, I need to make two dollars, one dollar for making the S-hook, one dollar for everything else I have to do just to sell the S-hook, plus two dollars in my overhead, time and or my materials, my expenses, so that means four dollars I break even. That gives me a reasonable wage, pays for my time, pays for my overhead. At five dollars I actually make profit and there's money in the bank and that's a better price. So it's all things to consider. And that is more or less an ideal way to add all that up. It's a sounds complicated but it's a little bit simpler than a lot of other formulas on how to price your work. Noel Putnam did an excellent article for Anvil magazine quite a few years ago where he went through his process of pricing. Most of us don't even think about when we're trying to price this S hook. We, we look at the S hook and say, yeah, that's worth about two bucks. And chances are if you're selling it for two bucks, you're losing money. But Noel did a very good, good article and at the, the time the the costs that he put in are no longer relevant today and they were relevant to a professional ornamental blacksmith shop not to a small craft shop or something like that so if you can find that article and I'll look for it if it's still online somewhere I'll put a link down in the description and I'll put a link right down here or I'll put the web address so you know that uh, it's worth looking for it. It may not still be online but it was a very good article on how to price your work. Now that is the ideal on how to price your work. Know your exact time, know your exact expenses, know how much time you spend not in the forge but still working on blacksmithing and factor all that stuff in. Keep track of all that. That's ideal and you should always get paid. You should get paid a fair wage and only you can decide what your fair hourly wage is. 
Personally, I think anything less than $20 an hour for a blacksmith is an insult. If you're making barely making minimum wage, which right now in the U.S. is something like $7.50 an hour, you know, you're better off working at a fast food place where you don't have to worry about the expenses. Somebody's paying your, your workman's comp insurance if you get hurt. All of that. So you really, if you're, you're investing your time, your materials, you've invested part of your life to learn how to be a blacksmith, you need to be making more than minimum wage. $20 an hour, I think, is really about minimal for what you should expect in blacksmithing. Is that realistic? The sad truth is it probably is not. A lot of blacksmiths don't make that good an hourly wage. A lot of that extra time that I was talking about, that time spent on the computer, emailing, doing marketing, packaging, shipping, I know I don't get fully compensated for. That's just part of running a small business. I end up working 60 to 80 hours a week and make about a 40 hour income at a reasonable wage and a lot of that time I'm just not compensated for well and that is not ideal. If I were doing big architectural work I would probably be compensated much better but I like making things like axes and adzes and the fair market value just isn't there to charge what I would really like to, to make for these. So that is the other thing we have to consider. What is the fair market value for the things we make? Now, going back to our S-hook example, if you go on online and you look at various blacksmith shops that sell S-hooks that are of the same basic size and quality that you're making, what are they charging for them? Are they charging $5 a hook? Are they charging $7 a hook? Are they only charging $2 a hook? But remember, don't look at just the high and the low. The person on the high end may not be selling any, and the person on the low end may not realize they're losing money yet. A lot of new blacksmiths, people who are just starting to sell, think, oh, my hook is only worth two bucks, that's what I'm going to sell it for, and they haven't done the math. They don't realize they aren't paying themselves back for their investment. They're not paying themselves for time spent not at the anvil, but still spent on their little business of blacksmithing. So that $2 price is probably way too low, and that's even though people are selling them for that, that doesn't mean you should. Also, if you're selling it for that, you are pulling business away from blacksmiths who are trying to make a fair wage because you don't think you need a fair wage. So by working cheap, you're, you're bringing down the entire value of ironwork. And if we all work at a reasonable price, then everybody makes a reasonable price. People are still going to buy the S-hooks, but if you're selling them cheap, one, you're going to be losing money in the long run. You're, you may think you're making money, but by the time you add it up, you might figure out that if it costs you $2 to make a hook and you're making 100 of them at $2 a piece, it cost you $200, you made $200, you didn't make a penny on it. So don't fall into that trap. But also don't assume that your hook is worth $15 just because there's some guy over here that has a really big name and a really high profile shop and might actually be able to get that because they're famous. But that $5 range, if that's what it averages out to, you probably should be able to sell them for that. Don't sell yourself short. Don't sell it too cheap. Your time is worth something. Make sure you're getting paid for that. On the other hand, sometimes the fair market value is not so good. Um, it seems good. An ads like this, the fair market value these days is about $225 with a handle on it. That's what it, most blacksmiths are selling ads is for. And that sounds like a really good price. Now, unfortunately, that takes me a lot longer dollar for dollar than making S-hooks. If I could make all the S-hooks I could possibly sell and was willing to bore myself to death making nothing but S-hooks, I would make a much better wage than I make making ads. Now, for me to sell these at what my time is worth and make a good profit and make a good living making ads, I would have to up the price considerably. Um, I'd have to go calculate what that is and figure it out. 
but that's not realistic. So if I want to make ads, as, I have to be willing to accept that I'm not going to make as much money making ads as, as I make making other things. I don't really like that, but I like making ads. As, I like making axes, so I accept that. And as long as this isn't the only thing I'm making, I can make that up. I have other products that I make that the fair market value vastly exceeds my time and materials estimates and I make very good money on. And some of that is not necessarily that the market value is overly inflated, it's just that I make so many of them I've gotten very good at it. And there are some items and I don't need to worry about exactly what those are because I'm not inviting you to compete with me openly with the things I make. But there are some things that when I first started making them, I was selling them for $65 because that's what the, the fair market value seemed to be at the time. And it was taking me about an hour to make one. Now, that means that after taking my overhead out and paying my expenses for that, I was making about $15 an hour. So that wasn't great wages. But now I charge $50 for those items, and I can make about four to six of them in an hour because I've just perfected the technique. I haven't really added any new equipment just to make those. I've made some bending jigs, things like that, that make it a little bit easier, a little faster. And again, we're going to talk about some production-oriented approaches to some of this to make things a little bit faster. So I was actually able to lower my price and increase my wage. And that's the ideal. And if I ever get to the point that I can make axes and adds as much faster, which will probably require some hydraulic press or fly press tooling that does this bend perfectly, because that's really where I, I fiddle and fuss so much is trying to get this just right my wage for doing axes and adzes will go up. And a lot of this is simply learning, it's gaining the experience. Though you have to consider fair market value. Um, if I make this hammer and I think I've got $500 worth of time and materials in it, I'm probably not going to sell a pound and a half hammer for $500. I might sell it for $150. I might even sell it for $200, but I'm never going to get my time and materials out of it if that's what I have in it. That isn't what I have in this, that's just an example. So you have to consider, is it worth making that product? Are you making it for the joy of making it? Which for me, axes and adzes are something I want to make, so I accept the lower wage. And then I make up for it making other things that have a much higher wage. And when I average all that out, I come out pretty good. Now, if I ever get tired of making axes and adzes and only make some of that other stuff, and S-hooks might fall into that, I can probably, like I say, I can make two dozen S-hooks in an hour. I can charge $5 per S-hook. So that's about $120 per hour before you calculate overhead and time spent doing other things. So S-hooks would, would help make up for what I lose doing ads is if I made that many S-hooks. I'd have to make a lot of S-hooks, and I don't want to make that many S-hooks. So I hope some of that makes sense. It's kind of kind of rambly, kind of just thinking off the top of my head. I don't really have a lesson plan for this. But it's a matter of keeping track of exactly what you're spending to make a product and exactly how much time it takes and then a pretty accurate estimate of how much time you spend doing other things. Doing shop maintenance, making new tools, doing the bookkeeping, doing the, the packaging, the shipping, preparing for a show, sitting at a show. And shows brings up another issue. And we'll talk about shows more, but going to a show costs you a lot more than selling word of mouth or selling online. And we'll also talk about some of the vague stuff around uh, setting up a website or an Etsy shop. I'm not going to get real in-depth with that. If you want real advice on that, 
Roy and Jessica over at Christ Centered Ironworks have done a great bunch of videos on the business of blacksmithing, setting up an Etsy shop, how to properly do tags and descriptions and photos and all that kind of stuff. And I strongly encourage you to go look at their stuff if you're really interested in the business of blacksmithing. These are just some of my random thoughts today. When it comes to shows, you have to realize that going to a show is going to cost you a lot more money. Now you're not going to have to pay shipping. You're going to get to meet customers in person, which hopefully helps your sales. Hopefully you're a likable enough person that people want to buy from you and you don't scare them off because you growl, grumble, and smell funny. But shows cost money. We have done a few big national woodworking shows and it is not uncommon for the cost of travel, lodging, and the space at the show to run as much as two thousand dollars. For some vendors I'm sure it costs a lot more than that because they ship their stuff by truck they have so much. We, we only take what we can shoehorn in the back of our little car and it's quite impressive what you can get in the back of an economy car if you think about how to pack it. But if you're spending two thousand dollars on a show and you sell four thousand dollars for the product have you made a profit? For me the answer is absolutely not. It cost me $2,000 to make the stuff. It cost me $2,000 to go to the show. That's a break-even deal. I did not make a penny for my time to make the product or to attend the show. So you need to think about that if you're going to craft shows, if you're going to do big shows. How does that really affect your overhead? Now, are those shows worth doing? I think they are because that's what gets you out in the public eye and doing these big shows makes you a real person. A lot of my customers have heard about me, but they don't really feel like they know me. And somehow going to these big shows suddenly makes you real. It makes you a known factor. It means that you're legitimate. You're not just some little website somewhere that they aren't sure if they want to do business with. So even if I don't make any money at the show, being able to talk to people in person, being able to meet the other big names in whatever business it is you're trying to market to, that stuff does turn out to be worthwhile. So I think that's worth it. But from a profit margin, a lot of times doing shows is not going to be very good money. I've never made good money at craft shows. And again, we'll talk about all this in more detail as a part of a future video. As a final thought, I'll kind of put my numbers in perspective for you. My goal in my shop, because I'm semi-retired, I, I have a little bit of a pension that, that does help with a lot of the expenses. I don't need to make a lot. My goal is about sixty to seventy-five dollars an hour. I calculate that overall my expenses, that's insurance, materials, packaging materials, things like tape and bubble wrap and packing paper, all that stuff, website expenses, email expenses, the, the cost of owning a cell phone, which if you're doing a business online, that should be a business expense, propane, oxygen, acetylene, welding gases, welding rod, grinding belts for the grinder, buffing compounds, electricity for the shop, buying new tools, maintaining old tools, all of that stuff all factored together is about 50 percent of what comes in the door. So if I'm making sixty dollars an hour, thirty dollars an hour of that is already gone. That's spent right off the top. It's all money not not ever going to come into my pocket. So that leaves me thirty dollars an hour for the time that it takes me to make an S hook. And I already said about half of my time is spent doing other things. So that means I'm making about fifteen dollars an hour making S hooks and fifteen dollars an hour doing the other stuff. That's not great wages. It should be more than that. But again, the price that the market will bear does not always allow us to do as much as we would like. Especially when you're making things out of the joy of making them and not simply for profit. If I was just looking for profit and only wanted to make the things that made me the best profit, I could come up with a list of things for me to make 
and easily make a hundred dollars an hour shop rate in which case my labor cost would be about twenty five dollars an hour but then I would have to give up on the axes and the adzes and the draw knives and a lot of other stuff and I would be back to making plant hangers and S hooks and fire irons and tent stakes and things that do get kind of all the same and get kind of boring so I just put up with the fact that I make a little bit less per hour but you need to do the the math you need to do the books and you need to keep track of it to find out are you really making money or are you losing money and what do you need that's something only you can decide I hope some of this helps I know it's a ramble I know it's uh, sort of drifted from one concept to another and there wasn't a whole lot of organization there I know this one's going to get a bunch of thumbs down because people don't like talking about uh, money issues but that's just the way it goes I hope most of you liked it and can give it a thumbs up love it if you hit that subscribe button remember we're when we hit 20,000 subscribers we're going to give away this uh, sample dragon that I made a few videos back so if you're subscribed you'll know when that video comes up stick around watch a few more of the videos try to make time to get out in your shop keep records of what you're doing how long it takes and what it costs you to do it but stay safe wear your safety glasses and we'll see you for the next one